A couple of weeks ago, I found myself going down a YouTube hole, clicking from video to video, until I eventually found myself on the YouTube channel of Michaela. Okay, so hi. This is fun and weird. Never done this before. She's basically like if Emma Chamberlain Thank you for watching my videos and being my friend. Aww. Became a Sims character. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. I'm gonna share some of my life with you. Honestly, it could get kind of personal. The interesting thing about her is that she's not a person. She's a character made by a team of writers and graphic artists here in Los Angeles. I'm a 19 year old musician, change seeker, taco truck expert, and robot. We made a video about her over a year ago, and at that point, she had just been named one of Time Magazine's most influential people. People feel really connected to her because it's written as if she were a real person. She's grown a massive following on Instagram and has collaborated with major brands. And she has hit songs with millions of streams. You say my name and it's like money, baby. I wanna spend it on you. Since our last video, she's partnered with Calvin Klein. She went to Coachella with YouTube Music. What's up? It's Michaela here with YouTube Music at Coachella. And recently became a member of Samsung's Team Galaxy to promote their new phones. Posting on Instagram or Twitter is one thing, but seeing Michaela on YouTube is just bizarre. I just want to feel close to someone who isn't my family. YouTube just creates a deeper connection with the audience than Instagram. Oh, no, I, I love, love you. you. I love you so much. I love much. you more. Wait, you're no, so no. awesome. And in our opinion, it feels like a real friendship. I don't think about it as me talking to this crowd of people. I always thought about it as me connecting with one person one on one. Especially when the people you watch open up to you in ways that your family or friends sometimes can't. I've tried filming this like three times already and I had to stop every time because I broke down crying. F this gives me so much anxiety. To us, this feels like an episode of Black Mirror on Netflix. And Michaela's influence is only growing stronger. I'm gonna tell you a story that's super embarrassing. It made me sad for a minute, but I don't know, maybe some of y'all will relate. Even though Michaela is continually finding success collaborating with major brands and celebrities, the company that created her has remained very mysterious. And their name is Brud. So we wanted to look into Brud and understand who is behind Michaela and what are their motives. Especially considering that one of the first things we found is that they are valued at $125 million. That's a lot of money for an animated character. We began our search back at the studio and found their website off of Michaela's YouTube channel. On Brud's website, which turns out to be just a Google Doc, the first thing you'll see is this. Brud is reading War of the Worlds on the radio. It's crossed out, but it's a reference to an incident in 1938 when fiction was read over the radio and perceived as real. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. Continue reading and you'll see that Brud defines themselves as a transmedia studio. Transmedia storytelling is a technique where you take a core experience or story and you expand it across multiple media. And that is exactly what Brud is. The stories of their three characters, Michaela, Blocko, and Bermuda, develop across different platforms as they post and interact with each other in the comments. When we looked at Brud's LinkedIn, the roster definitely reflects that of a new age content studio. Their 40 plus employees are comprised of graphic artists, stylists, designers, writers, and engineers. At the helm are a lot of employees with experience in the entertainment industry. Whether it be GM Lauren Golston, who spent time at Lionsgate and AOL, or Chief Content Officer Nicole De Iora from Vice. Then you have Carrie Sun, formerly of Microsoft, who appears to be the technical brains of the operation. This year, one of Brud's co-founders, Sarah Deku, was listed on Forbes' 30 under 30 list for consumer technology. But the most quoted and public member of the team is Brud's co-founder, Trevor McFedries. We dove into his background to get a better understanding of why he started Brud, and what we found was pretty unexpected. <laughs> This is Trevor 10 years ago when he went by the name DJ Skeet Skeet. I'm DJ Skeet Skeet. We're in my studio and when I'm not texting my sister how to update her Mac OS, I'm here making music or eating Mexican food. He then was part of a rap group with Swayze and worked with some of the world's biggest recording artists as a producer. If you look in Katy Perry's Teenage Dream music video, this is him right there. Internet's a crazy thing, man. Then Trevor became an early employee at Spotify. So there's a million different kind of vehicles for music. And after that, became the manager and producer for the musician Banks. It's a brand new artist named Banks. Two years after Banks released her first record, Michaela made her first appearance on Instagram. So it was during that time that Trevor made the jump from managing a real artist in Banks to a fictional one in Michaela. 
Guess what? I have two new songs out now. Please listen to them or I'll eat 10 tacos and cry myself to sleep. Musicians like Michaela, who have no known identity, are actually relatively common in music. You see it with artists like The Gorillas, Marshmallow, and Dead Mouse. Take Asian artist Hatsune Miku as an example. She even uses holograms to do live shows. So Michaela may have been a natural progression for Trevor's music career. I just love music and the more I can get it out there for whatever purpose, you know, the better. But clearly led to so much more once she took to social media. What's up Michaelians? You know what time it is. Michaela shares random information about her life that nobody cares about time. She now has real fans that she has influence over. And as far as Trevor's intentions go for using that influence, he was cited in an interview in 2016 saying that the effect he wanted to have was similar to that of Will and Grace, a popular sitcom that normalized LGBTQ into the mainstream. I think Will and Grace probably did more to educate the American public than almost anything anybody's ever done. And you'll see that Michaela is often an advocate for progressive issues and an ally for marginalized communities. Fucked up as this thing is, if sharing it can help someone else who's gone through something similar feel less alone, then it's worth it. Brud has already used Michaela's influence to raise money for multiple causes, including Black Girls Code and California Wildfire Relief. And she even donated over $100,000 of audio equipment to after-school programs around the U.S. So it appears that Brud is building Michaela out of a love of storytelling and a passion for social change. Hey everyone, I'm celebrating my money music video with a little contest. Gonna help some of the winners pay off some of their student loans. Check it out. But if Brud really is out to do good, why are people so upset when they come across her? I mean, the comments are heated. Yeah, people really kind of freak out about Michaela. And this gets back to that reference to War of the Worlds on their website. In 1938, the radio broadcast scared people because they didn't know if it was real or fake. Which one of these people is real? I mean, they all look like real people. This girl right here, she's not real. That's crazy. She was the last one I would have guessed. According to a study from Fullscreen, 42% of Gen Z and millennials have followed an influencer on social media that they didn't even know was CGI. Especially as apps like Facetune start to make real people look like they were made using CGI. So that, that right there, that's Sony Pictures. And this whole block is actually Sony Pictures Studios. And there's a ton of these movie studios all over LA. And that's essentially what Brud is. They are like the next iteration of movie studios. While Sony Pictures has Spider-Man, Disney has Mickey Mouse, Brud has Michaela and her cast of characters. The only difference is that they are pioneering how these stories are being told. What Brud is doing is new. And anytime a new medium for storytelling comes about, there's oftentimes friction, and it takes time for people to actually understand and adopt what's going on. With an estimated valuation of 125 million, clearly they have big plans for their cast of characters. And now with Michaela's entrance to YouTube, these characters could massively grow and intensify their fan bases. The result would be this interesting new form of storytelling in which real people develop complex relationships with fake ones. There's no doubt that what Brud is building with Michaela is just the beginning. Don't forget to recharge your hearts. We could all use a little bit of that. It is weird to think that Michaela will be around longer than you and I are on this earth. Whoa, that's too much. All right, that's it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and comment below with what you think about Brud. Do you think Brud is actually the modern day movie studio? Or are we just looking way too much into it and robots are actually just taking over? Let us know. Peace.